All right, everyone, we're group 14. We're developing a wireless soldering iron. My name's Ethan, this is Owen, Zach, and Brian. We're gonna go quick to recap what the project is so we can get into what we've been working on. So what are we making? We're developing a battery-powered soldering iron that has ample runtime, charges with either USB Type-C or while it's docked in its charging stand. So our goal for this capstone is just to have a proof of concept for all the major systems. Um, why are we making this? So from our use of soldering irons, we've noticed traditional soldering irons have wires that get in the way and require constant AC power. So it's annoying to use out in the field or somewhere where there's no AC power. And the traditional battery powered soldering irons either uh, sacrifice power or have a short runtime or just really bulky. So we aim to solve these problems. Here are some main performance goals like the max temperature, the heat up time, and the runtime, as well as the main one, which is that the iron is able to be charged by the stand while it's docked. So how are we doing this? Our idea behind our process was to take a couple of soldering iron designs that already exist, such as the TS100 or the Pine Cell, and just take that system and kind of redesign it in order to suit our needs. So inside the iron itself, there will be a microprocessor, there will be the tip control circuitry to heat up the tip, there will be the power path, to power it, and we'll also have a user interface quite similar to this one right here. In the stand itself, it will just have the power in order to charge the iron. So after doing some research, we found that there are a few open source projects for a soldering iron design. So we have the Pine Soul, which I mentioned in the last slide, which has open source firmware, and we also have the Iron OS, um, which is just a generic operating system specifically for uh, soldering iron designs. So we have our system architecture depicted here. We have the stand and the iron, and we'll get into the subcomponents there on the following slide. All right, now we get into the developments since last time. So since last time, each of us have focused on our particular uh, role a little bit uh, more in depth. So Ethan focused on the tip control design and board. Owen focused on the power flow design and board. Uh, Brian focused on the real-time operating system and the UI implementation and I focused on the user interface design and board. So as we can see from the system architecture, uh, the user interface consists of the screen, the buttons, and the status LED. So to start with just what the user will be seeing, we've, uh, we've been making uh, 128 by 32 bit designs that we've uh, uh, turned into bitmaps. So you can see these here. Uh, you can see with the inactive and active screens that we leave a little bit of room on the side so that Brian can go on the software and have the live updating for the battery power or the voltage or anything like that. And then from the flow here, as you can see, we'll be using the A and B buttons on our uh, soldering iron, but Brian will get into more depth about that later on in the presentation. So for the interface board uh, design, we have the main header that connects our processor to our uh, interface board. We have our OLED, uh, uh, headers that will just power our uh, display and then we'll have our buttons that will you know allow the user to interface with it and then from there we have our uh, LED driver which will power our status LED which will communicate whether the iron is hot or if it's cooled off or if the battery is dying and then we have the accelerometer which will uh, help us implement a sleep mode. So what remains for the interface uh, we got to finish up some of the bitmap uh, and uh, screen designs. So for the user settings screen and the advanced settings screen, we have a little few uh, sub uh, sections that we need uh, maps for, designs for. And then uh, we need to order and test the board design. Uh, board needs to be ordered by the end of October. And uh, we're gonna test the functionality of our status LED, OLED, and accelerometer. And then finally, we need to implement our board with the rest of the product. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the software that's running on the iron itself. So this is our software design right here. It kind of shows the flow between the different states that the iron will be in. This was actually based on the pine cell iron design. Um, and so what we have is we'll boot up, go into, you know, display a little logo and go into the main menu. When in, inside the main menu, you can use the A or B buttons. And if you press A, you'll go into the soldering state here, which is just the normal operation. You can also adjust the temperature in here, or you can put it in boost if you need a little extra power. <coughs> you also have the option to go into the settings menu, where you can adjust things such as you know the time to wait before going into sleep mode. And you also have just generic temperature control when it's off, 
or you can just print out some device information. Lastly, we have our sleep mode. So if the accelerometer doesn't detect motion for long enough, it'll go into the sleep mode. And then when you wake it back up with the button press, it'll go right back to the next step. So inside the code, we have three tasks in our real-time operating system. One of them is the state control there. And what that will do is basically implement the design you saw on the last slide and implement all the transitions and reading the button inputs and all that. And it will display the main screen with those bitmaps that Zach showed in his slide. We have our monitor control, which will periodically uh, check to see what the battery is, what the temperature is, and what the accelerometer is reading. And if the accelerometer doesn't read data, then this will actually implement the sleep mode feature. And constantly it will be updating the screen header to show you, you know, what your battery percentage is, what the current temperature of the iron is. And lastly, we have a tip control task, which will just be in charge of keeping that southern iron there. So what remains for the software? Um, the tip control task is currently in development. We hope to finish that up soon. We have accelerometer testing that we need to do. We have the battery management system, which Owen and Ethan are working on. And we have the user settings, which we have framework for, but we don't have any actual configurable settings yet. And lastly, of course, we have just cleaning up code, making sure it's easy to read and not try later on. Okay, so now on the power pack. You can kind of see it's a fairly critical subsystem for what we're trying to do. Uh, it takes up a, a large portion of our, our system architecture. Um, the big thing that has required a lot of research on our end has been this charging interface, uh, which is through USB PD, which is kind of complicated to figure out how that is going to work and how to explain it to ourselves. So here's some of the batteries. We were for the board right now will evaluate two different pack, pack layouts. Um, <coughs> the one we're probably going for is most, that is most promising is a 3S1P. 350 pack, that's the little battery at the top there. Uh, another possibility that we're looking at is a 2S1P, 650, a Samsung 32, which is the pink one in the middle there. We also at one point looked at a 21700, um, but that wasn't going to be quite, you know, it would be very nice, but it would be too big to make it sort of feasible and nice for a tablet. Um, big part of our project is making sure we use safe. Obviously, it's, there's a lot of danger that's inherent with this. So batteries, just like the batteries, we're going to have um, over voltage, under voltage, short circuit, as well as thermal runaway protection. There's also another circuit that we designed that is around uh, disconnecting the batteries when the southern iron is powered off. And then continuing on a sort of uh, larger scale for the protection, um, we're going to have an IC that will handle the protection, the monitoring, as well as battery balancing, so sort of pack level protection. Um, this, we have space constraints to work around, so a lot of time was spent trying to find one that would do all of these in, in one sort of IC. Um, this this was weirdly enough called a battery gauge and not a battery monitor or protector, which made the search a lot more complicated. But we have found that now in the work, and you can see it in a schematic up at the top. So USB PD and charging. So what is USB PD? When you plug anything into a USB wallet, USB C wall adapter, chances are it's using USB PD. Um, USB PD allows the, the source, the uh, AC DC converter, to say what it can supply. And then the sink, and our, the, our iron in this case, can negotiate with what it needs. So that requires two ICs working together on our iron. So we have PD negotiator IC, and then that talks to a battery charger IC, which actually still facilitates the, uh, the regulation of the power as well as charging the battery. Um, so our charging power from PD source is 20 volts at 5 amps, so 100 watts. Um, the minimum to do both charging the iron as well as powering the iron. Uh, that we predict is about 15 watt volts, <coughs> 3 amps, or 45 amps. Anything less than that, we're going to have to restrict it to just charging batteries because it won't be quite enough to power the iron. So, what remains? Uh, largely, that mess on the right there. Um, we need to finish the prototype board. The schematic is done. We need to review it. Uh, and then we need to complete the layout. It's going to be a fairly complicated process, but the hope is that it'll be finished fairly soon. Um, configuring the settings on the ICs, the PDIC needs some things set up in, in it, and then the battery. Uh, Vector IC needs to be controlled what the battery pack looks like. Um, the test functionality will be sort of the last phase that we're doing. Uh, we'll be looking at fault conditions, USB PD functions, and then power regulation. All right, so since last time we talked, there have been a couple external design changes. So the main one is that the stand to iron interface has been changed. So instead of using these pogo pins, we're now using an Apple, like uh, the headphones, AirPods-like design. 
which kind of makes the design a little more sleek and we rounded the corners on both sides to make it all look more uniform. <coughs> we're also working on a charging case which also can act as a stand. So when you put the iron in, you can fold it down and it can be a stand or and the case will charge the iron. So really enforcing that portability aspect of the iron. Another thing we've been working on is tip controls. So as you can imagine, the soldering iron needs to get hot and stay at a temperature while you're soldering. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about that. So here's the tip that we're working with. It's a HACO design tip, but now it's really common across the industry. And it's convenient because it has two contacts that we interface with instead of the traditional four contacts. But the downside of that is that the thermocouple, which is the, a common type of temperature sensor, and the uh, heating element are in parallel, which means we can't actually read temperature while we're powering the tip, which is a little inconvenient. Um, how these work, is, how thermocouples work is it uses the Seebeck effect, which is um, two dissimilar type metals create an electromotive force, and the temperature difference between those metals can be measured as a voltage. It's a very, very small voltage, which leads us into this control board we designed. Um, the main function of this is to be able to toggle the power to the tip, as well as amplify the little voltage that this uh, thermocouple puts out. And so there's a couple other things on here, like a switching regulator and uh, LVO and an actual like temperature sensor for ambient temperature, but that's for later use. And then how are we actually getting and set to a set point and staying at a temperature? This is our current control system. Um, it's a PI loop currently. We might explore a PID loop if we deem thermal recovery when we're soldering isn't responsive enough. But currently it gets the temperature set point from the user interface then it disables power to the tip so that we can read temperature. It calculates an error based on our set point and then calculates our control output using our KP and KI gains and then sets the PWM frequency to that control output and waits 100 milliseconds and does it all over again. You can see here a video of it performing very nicely. So here's our thermal camera. You can see the actual temperature. This is the temperature reading going up and this is our set point. And you can see here it stabilizes around the set point pretty nicely. There's still some tuning to do, but, um, and then you can see the actual temperature curve right here. So it, it has a pretty good response, but we haven't tested it in an actual soldering environment where there's changes in the, how much metal you actually have to heat up. And so what really remains with this is that currently how we're converting our ABC reading to a degrees temperature value that's not accurate. We need we have a big lookup table and we need to tune that so it, uh, it it shows accurate temperature. Another thing we need to do is tune uh, our control systems response, add thermal runaway protection, um, test the thermal recovery while soldering, and then finally implement it into the main code. So where does this leave us? So for our schedule here, what we want to have done by the end of October includes the power path and interface board ordering, and we want the temperature control to be tuned and reading the accurate temperatures. In November, we're looking to have the software completed, and we're looking to have the testing and integration of power path and interface board also done. By November 15th, that's our goal for when we want to have just a bench test available for us to do, so we can just test everything all together and make sure that there's no problems with how to communicate. So thank you for listening to our presentation, and are there any questions? So it seems that there are several boards involved with this. We have the temperature control board and the actual like main interface board. Would those actually all fit into the wiring? Oh yeah. There, in the actual wiring itself, here yeah, we'll get it. Um, in the actual wiring itself, there's space for the battery, but then there's also space for that we've designated for the the circuit board itself. And as you know, you can make double-sided circuit boards, so we'll have components on the front and the back. But a lot of the components you saw in that actual picture were test points, so those won't actually be on the final thing. But here is the form factor itself with the prototype charging case that we've designed. And it doesn't do anything yet, but it's just to kind of show 
how it will work and work together. Yeah. And make that case and stuff too. Like that's, the, that's the case you're going to turn that in. It's like that cool unfolding case where it stands up. Yeah, this is the goal. This is what I talked about in the one of the slides where it's a yeah. stand and charging case. So inside this case, there will be batteries in here. So when you're on the go, you can put your iron in and there's contacts inside here that will charge the iron and <coughs> So I think you uh, said it had a charge time of an hour. It has a run time of, that's our goal, a run time of an hour. Okay, so like have you almost pretended like you're using it for an hour or so and see like does it actually feel comfortable to use? Yeah, we, we haven't done, oh, pretend to use this model? Yeah, pretend to use that model for like an hour and see like do you actually feel comfortable using it? Yeah, we have, we've done like short tests of maybe 20 minutes, but no one's really ever soldering for an hour straight. That's why we can take advantage of that when they put it in the stand, it charges the iron. But yeah, that's definitely some user testing that we'll have to complete. And we've talked to a lot of users about the form factor, and uh, or we talked to a bunch of people about if they like the feel and the weight of it, and they all said it was comfortable. But some further testing is required. Um, for the for the R toss, how much of like a test pen is there? And because I didn't see any mention for like error recovery or we set to assess safe state if there is like a thermal runaway or anything like that. So for testing the the software there, like the for example the state machine control, that's all been written, and I've been able to test. You know, does every you know button press do the correct transition, and just go through every single state, make sure it does exactly what we need it to. And yeah, we also have that sleep mode, which is actually implemented in, the diff in a different task, which is checked by the accelerometer. So again, the, acceleromo the accelerometer still needs to be tested. We had an initial breakout board, but there was an error in the, in the layout there, so we weren't able to go through that. But yeah, that testing will still be done for that. And yeah, that's... Do you have a watchdog running in the background in case one of the tasks like, fails to respond? So we have our monitor task, which will be just going periodically to make sure everything's running properly. And so if something goes wrong, that should be able to recover from that. There's also potential for implementing a hardware watchdog, so we're not reliant on the software functioning properly, which will just reset the processor if there's no response for a certain couple seconds or so. A lot of the stuff right now is just proof of concept that we can actually get these things working. So once we get you know, everything working, we can how does does it when you have the iron in the stand you turn it on does it maintain its temperature or does it automatically start cooling off so that when I'm soldering I put it back it starts cooling off I take it out and I have to wait five six seconds to heat back up the next start soldering or does it maintain its temperature in the case? Yeah, we, we haven't considered those little details yet, but it's definitely <laughs> something that can be user configurable. So when it's in the stand. The stand will probably be have, have a lot of metal insulation, so the temperature will stay within it, even if we do start to cool down. And there is a lot of thermal mass in the tip itself, which yeah. keeps its temperature. So if you put it down for maybe 10 minutes, it's probably gonna cool down to maybe like 200 degrees, but then getting up to like 400 could be pretty quick. But still things to think about. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there any On the concept itself, we check in the first assignment, and there's no patents for specifically what we're doing. There is a patent if we do wirelessly communicate to a dock. But as for the Apple thing, yeah, we haven't looked into that specifically, but a lot of companies do that across the board, so we thought it was pretty safe because, I mean, every wireless earbud you use charges the same way. So. Oh.